today what we are going to do is fix everything that is wrong with the car starting with new timing belt oil filter fuel filter new coolant new water pump and new oil also i will replace the serpentine belt and i guess some uh, surprises will be as i work on the car but i just want to show you the ina kit i don't know if it can transfer well that thing happened as well i don't know if i can transfer the filling to the screen but those product feels very very solid and very very high quality and I just want to start working on the car so let's get started in the first step I lifted the vehicle as in many other jobs I removed the wheel on the passenger side I removed the SAR arch which is attached with some Torx bolts this frees up space and access to the pulleys area which is going to be my best friend for the next few hours I lifted the vehicle a little more to remove the lower cover which is attached with several 10mm head bolts. And I lowered the car a bit. I start free some space from the top of the engine compartment, disconnected the battery and removed the air filter box. Ooh la la! I removed the starter motor which is attached with 3 Allen 8 bolts. Removing the starter motor gave me access to the flywheel, we will soon see why. I opened the cap of the expansion tank so that the coolant will drain easily through the bottom hose. While the coolant is draining, using a 15mm wrench I release the existing drive belt by loosening the tensioner. At this point you can see that there isn't too much room to work and the 2 liter engine creates quite a tight workspace. Well, we will have to live with it. After the cooling system was completely drained, I reconnected the lower radiator hose and before removing the engine mount, I placed a jack stand and a wooden block under the engine to support it. For a more convenient access, I removed the feed hose of the fuel filter. This step will be necessary later anyway when I replace the filter. I removed the bolt that holds the expansion tank using a 10mm socket and disconnected the two hoses attached to it. I removed a few more bolts with a 15mm head and Torx bolt that hold the engine mount in place. First the top mount comes off. Okay. <laughs> this will need a replacement. And after removing a couple more Torx bolts, I could remove the second bracket that supported the engine as well. This is so narrow, I can only put a finger between the engine and the bracket. The upper timing belt cover comes apart with a few bolts with 10mm heads. And the tricky part is not removing the bolts, which requires all kinds of different tools or extensions, but disconnecting the clips of the harness that is connected to the cover. There is really no access to see the clips and you have to work with a lot of patience until it works. Okay, so we have the three 10 millimeter bolts, another uh, 10 millimeter nut, and we have the wiring harness that is attached with this uh, first clip. And then we have two uh, clips from another type that it's like a mushroom and we have to, it was hard to uh, film it in video, but you take a clip um, extractor tool and just pull it out and that's it. And now I could remove the top cover. I saw the condition of the belt even before I completely removed it and you can see that it is about time. Before removing the bottom cover, I pulled off the crank pulley rubber cover so I could rotate the engine to the desired timing marks. The axis is tight, but there is a hole in the cam pulley that needs to be aligned with a hole on top of the engine. Then lock the camshaft in place using an 8mm locking pin. My method is this. While a friend rotated the engine carefully and slowly, I tried to insert the locking pin into the hole until it got in. Remember the flywheel? So it also needs to be locked in place using an 8mm hole that was hidden behind the starter that I removed earlier. I removed the crank bolt using impact. There is no other way to remove it since it needs the impact quick torque to be released. The crank bolt comes with Loctite. According to the book, it must be replaced. 
I played with the engine height and created enough room to pull the crank pulley out. And in addition, there is also the magnetic ring of the crank sensor. I pulled it out carefully so as not to damage the magnet. We will return to it later. We now got access to a few more 10mm head bolts that hold the bottom cover and their removal resulted in the removal of the lower cover itself. Now that the belt is exposed, I cleaned the crank bolt from the Loctite residue using brake cleaner. From the top, I loosened the tensioner 13mm lock nut and by using an Allen key, I could loosen the tensioner and take the pressure off the belt to remove it from the pulleys. The removal of the tensioner was not that simple. As I said, the workspace is tight. I can assume that this vehicle was not designed to be with air compressor at start. And if it is, then, well, I don't want to curse on this video. I will try with the jack. I removed the old idler pulley, its bolt is a bit hidden, but with a 60mm socket it has just enough place to come out. And as always I like to compare old versus new. As I said at the beginning of the video, the new one in this case feels of the highest quality. A few more bolts holding the water pump in place. I assembled the new water pump and believe me it was very difficult to get everything in place with such a terrible exit. But I tried as much as I could to tighten the bolts to specs which is 50 Newton meters. And it was also the turn of the new idler pulley to meet the engine, his new home. And after I assembled the new tensioner, the only way to work with it is with a mirror. Otherwise you can't see the marking. It is quite hard to show you what I did there, so I put the instruction on the screen. Now I put the new timing belt, making sure that the text is pointing with the direction of the engine rotation clockwise. Okay, sorry, but I couldn't show you what I did right now, so I will show you now, because it's very tight in here and I couldn't fit a camera and a mirror and my tools, so what I did is open the central nut and then, with uh, Allen key, I adjusted the tensioner and then, let me find it, just a second, okay, you see ah, that little arrow, that pointing, oh, okay, right now, you see that little arrow and it is exactly in the middle between those two uh, marking points that's where it should be and then you tight the central nut and it's and the belt is tensioned at the right specs and as i showed you earlier the floating uh, the, the floating sprocket now check it out it's exact the tooth is exactly in the middle where it's supposed to be. Peugeot have a special tools that lock it in place while you tension it, but you just need to spin it all the way to anti-clockwise, so the tooth is uh, close to that edge. And then when you uh, tension the belt, it slides just a little bit and go in the middle of this hole. And now we know that the timing is correct. I reassembled the lower timing cover, the magnetic ring and the crank pulley. The crank pulley also have some free play, so you have to rotate it between its two ends and find the middle points and place it at that point. And of course, finally, I installed the new crank bolt with Loctite applied to it already. And I rotated the engine 6 revolution in total to make sure that the marking remained as they were. Let me tell you the truth, this part was not easy because the tensioner is not yet at maximum tension. So every 2 revolution I had to slightly correct the gap between the crankshaft and the camshaft. 
until I could finally insert the locks after six full turns. The arrow of the tensioner is between the two marking points and it tells me that I can tighten the nuts all the way. I assembled everything that left, the rubber cover of the crank pulley, the timing cover and its wiring harness. From here I continued to replace the fuel filter, this requires the removal of several Torx bolts, two diesel hoses, one of which was already removed at the beginning of the work and one connector. I applied some force using flathead screwdrivers and pulled the filter housing out and replaced the old one with the new one, including replacing the o-ring that comes with the new filter. I tightened the Torx bolts, I put back the fuel hoses and the connector and primed diesel with the hand pump while the air bleed screw was open. This is necessary to create pressure in the system without having hair bubbles in it. And I tightened the bleeding screw back. A new drive belt was also assembled in the reverse order of removing the previous belt. But to leave the engine I also had to put back the engine mount. I cleaned the expansion tank and put it back in place as well and filled the cooling system with fresh original PSA coolant. Okay, so everything is back together. I connected all the hoses, all the electrical, the air filter, the battery. And now for the moment of truth, let's see if she starts. Wow! <laughs> uh. It's always a huge relief to finish such a complex job with a working engine. Let's continue to bleed the air from the coolant system. There are two bleeders here. One on the upper radiator hose, open the cap and wait for coolant to come out of there. We can see that as soon as we open the cap, the coolant level drops because it pushes air out of the system. The second bleeding point is on the inlet pipe to the heating core. I like to let the engine idle for at least 10 minutes and look for leaks around the areas I worked on. And everything looks fine. The coolant level is maintained, so I close the expansion tank cap and put the last parts back in place. The wheel arch and the wheel. The memory card went to the other side at this point, so instead of showing you the actual work of this part, I'm showing you the removal part in reverse. I got some good ideas sometimes. 